So we're going to give, uh, this will be we very fast because we, uh, or very broad and high level because we have a lot of research um, activities and engagement activities going on across a, a variety of different dimensions and domains. And uh, this is uh, not, as other prisoners had said, this is um, a work of a large group of people of which I am the least important. Uh, so first, one of our biggest uh, um, efforts is around mapping cholera. Um, and you know this involves a, a lot of activities, including a developing curation of global data. Um, we've been working to update estimates of global cholera, um, looking at the impact and cost effectiveness of global OCV investments using um, our burden estimates. Uh, mapping, looking at mapping season, and sort of ongoing work is looking at mapping seasonality and interannual availability. We're trying to leverage new and different types of data to make these maps better and more accurate and reflect the situation where report, you know, attempt to reflect the situations where reporting is inadequate better. Um, we try to, we're reviewing and summarizing cholera outbreak um, characteristics using the data set. And uh, we've been working, and I'll talk about our database a bit tomorrow um, and a potential role that can play uh, in GTFCC activities, but we've been working on improving that a lot. Um, and you know we use you know we're using this data to look at risk factors for cholera incidence, things from weather and climate. Uh, this is some work we did a, a couple years back on El Nino to control. So this on the right is showing uh, the association between uh, pr improved wash and being in a high um, and sort of cholera incidence, which is uh, I think the wash indicator we is not that great. <laughs> It's not that WASH doesn't work, it's our indicator isn't wonderful. Uh, so to, to, we've been working uh, on integrate on cholera genomics and integrating uh, epidemiological and uh, genomic data. And this has a couple uh, dimensions. This is a new project for us and it has a couple dimensions. One is trying to bring in more cholera sequence data, more genetic data that can uh, give us a sense of the uh, picture and then link this with the epidemiological data because you know, there's been a lot of work that's used the genetic data alone to try to make inferences, and there's been a lot of work using epidemiological data alone, but the link from those is, uh, is tenuous. So we've been bringing in more sequencing using, if you look at that little thing sitting next to the uh, laptop, if for people who haven't seen it, that's a MinION uh, device, and that is what is doing our whole, whole genome sequencing. Um, and using that, we've looked at, for instance, uh, what the difference is between uh, how countries cluster if you look at just their incidents, their epidemiological patterns in Africa, versus if you looked at what sequences appear appeared where and what their sequence profile um, or cholera lineage profiles look at. And, and the clusters are similar, but they're not exact. Uh, we've been working with uh, many countries doing uh, case studies and uh, trying to assist them in uh, response to cholera activities and bringing data and epidemiological analytics to their cholera control plans. Uh, this includes a lot of work uh, with uh, South Sudan. Uh, Andrew Asman has been going there uh, for basically this entire timeline. Um, and uh, looking at um, the association here between rainfall and cholera, uh, we've been uh, you know, we worked with Zanzibar to look at uh, what was happening in their recent cholera outbreaks and past cholera outbreaks and how much, how much there was actual repeatability in the supposed hot spots. How much was the incidence, the high incidence places, how, much, how often were they in the high incidence, uh, remained the high incidence places and found that, you know, that was more repeatable in Pimba than in, um, I'm not going to try pronounce it. Um, and then uh, identifying, uh, and then we sort of tried to put more of the using the data and using the analytics in the hands of the people, uh, of, of people who were more engaged and from countries themselves in putting together this dashboard uh, for, Tanz um, for Tanzania that uh, would allow, um, take the data on estimated mean annual incidence, estimated maximum annual incidence, and uh, the stability of incidents at various um, in various districts and the period of interest and allow people to weight those that information themselves as they try to decide what 
the, um, and try to make prioritized lists of where to target and stuff. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, we've been recently, we've been doing work with uh, trying to use serology to get at the ground truth in ways that the surveillance, about what's going on with cholera in ways that the surveillance data uh, finds difficult to do directly. Um, you know, so Andrew Asman and um, along with other people in the team have, you know, we came up with a way to um, use the many serological indicators to get a good, uh, estimate of how long it's been since people were infected, and you know we're using this um, with, for instance, uh, sero survey data from Bangladesh to get a good picture of, um, or try to get a better picture of what recent cholera incidences in different locations. And this is all preliminary, so don't get too hung up on this particular map itself at this point. But, and that's that.